हेलो एन आर आई फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू एस बी एन आर आई द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन एन आर आई बैंकिंग माई नेम इज़ मोहित आई एम अ सी ए बाई प्रोफेशन सी एफ ए लेवल थ्री एंड दिस इज द फोर्थ वीडियो ऑफ आवर वीडियो सीरीज एंड टूडे वी विल बी कवरिंग द एन आर ई अकाउंट और द नॉन रेसिडेंट एक्सटर्नल अकाउंट सो वे नाउट एनी फर्दर अड डू लेट्स जस्ट गेट इन टू इट सो इन दिस वीडियो टूडे वी विल टेक यू थ्रू अ बेसिक ओवर व्यू ऑफ द एन आर ई अकाउंट फॉलोड बाई द नॉमिनेशन प्रोसीजर्स फॉर द सेम Uh, then we will discuss about the joint applicants or who can be a joint applicant or a joint account holder for an RI accounts. And uh, by the end of the video, we will try to uh, differentiate between the different types of account, keeping an RI as our center of focus, and we will compare it with the other two types of an RI accounts. So let's dive into it. To begin with, the an RI account overview. so again uh, today to understand the basic overview of the account we will be considering various factors beginning with the purpose of the account so the purpose of an nre account is for parking your funds or the income that you have earned outside india and there are different types of nre accounts that you can choose for the same uh, the uh, prominent ones are the savings account the recurring and the fixed deposit accounts so to give you a brief over them the savings account is just uh, the account where you keep your money and you get an interest on that uh, but the recurring and fixed deposit accounts are separate uh, kinds where uh, in recurring uh, deposits what actually happens is that a certain amount of money is deducted from your account for a fixed period of time so let's take uh, an example here so if we are opening a recurring fixed deposit account for one year Uh, and the recurring deposit is of one lakh twenty thousand, for example. So then every month ten thousand will be deducted from your account, and the by and by the end of the year you will be getting interest on that one lakh twenty thousand. Whereas for a fixed deposit, what actually happens? Uh, the entire one lakh twenty thousand is deposited uh, as a one-time payment for uh, one year, and after one year you get the uh, interest on the deposits. So that is the basic difference between recurring and fixed deposits. and the savings accounts are the normal savings accounts that we operate now the currency to consider here is the fact that uh, these nre accounts are maintained in inr you can only withdraw the funds in inr you cannot use foreign currency as withdrawals uh, the tenure of deposits uh, deposits for the fixed deposits accounts uh, generally range from 1 year to 10 years and the interest on this fd uh, this interest is basically dependent on the bank you have chosen for the account opening uh, the interest varies with the banks and their internal offerings so we are trying to provide you with a stipulated average uh, percentage of interest that is being provided so it is around 6.80% that is the average rate of interest on nre deposits uh, after that we'll be discussing about the minimum balance requirements for such accounts So such accounts uh, for an RE, uh, you need to maintain a minimum balance of rupees ten thousand. Now this balance can be maintained in two forms, uh, depending on the bank again. Uh, this can either be in form of an average monthly balance, where you have to maintain ten thousand as an average balance for the entire month. But uh, it can also be uh, considered in a form of average quarterly balance, wherein the same amount has to be maintained in the entire quarter, so that is three months. so that uh, entirely depends on the bank how they are offering uh, either they are going for the monthly balance or they are going for the average quarterly balance now we will discuss the two main topics uh, under the overview which is the repatriation and the associated tax deductions so when i combine both of them uh, that is basically because when we discuss repatriation which is a process of transferring the money in your nre account to your overseas or foreign bank account so when you do that the principal amount as well as the interest that you have accumulated on that amount is completely repatriable as well as freely repatriable so by completely i mean you can take all the money out of that account and by freely i mean no taxes are deducted on the interest earned on this account so everything that you have deposited and the interest earned is free for you to take away you don't need to pay any sort of taxes to the government now coming uh, to the next uh, important topic which is the nomination as well as the joint applicants so under nomination every major bank provides you with the facility to update your nominees in case you don't have any nominee for your account having a nominee is very beneficial uh, it helps you specifically it helps you after the death claims uh, in case the account holder expires then it becomes easy for the 
uh, settlement of the funds in the account and it is transferred to the nominee's account. So that is the basic purpose of having a nominee uh, to just uh, make the entire process seamless and make the settlements uh, easy. That's the only factor nominations are uh, like necessary for. So we will be discussing about the process to update the nominees for NRE account. Uh, you can opt for an online as well as an offline process. Uh, the online process is very simple. You go to the bank's website, log into your uh, uh, account and then just under uh, there is an add nominee option. You can just add the nominee by providing and verifying the details. It is as simple as that. But when we discuss about the offline process of updating a nominee, there is a form uh, specifically called the DA1. So that this DA1 form is for the updation of a nominee. You need to fill the form uh, and submit it at the bank branch and they will update the nominee for you. Now since we have discussed the DA1 form, we need to discuss two more forms which are associated with the nomination process. It is the DA2 and DA3. So the DA2 form is used for the cancellation of nominees. So we can understand this by taking an example. Say you have an NRE account in India and your wife, for example, is the nominee. Uh, but now you want your daughter to be the nominee because she has come of age, uh, she is an adult now and you want her to be the nominee. So in that case, you fill the DA2 form and you cancel the present nominee and you can then update your daughter as the nominee. And the DA3 form is used for the replacement of a nominee. You know, there is a very thin line of difference here which is uh, the uh, cancellation is done uh, in case of the example we discussed uh, in case your daughter won't uh, you want your daughter to be the nominee in that case we'll go for DA2 but DA3 we will choose in case of replacement which only happens in cases where the nominees expire so for example I have any relative uh, as a nominee for my NRE account and there is a miss happening he or she expires then I need to uh, replace that nominee so uh, for that purpose DA3 form is used now we have discussed about the nomination. Uh, we will also discuss about the joint applicants thing. So the question uh, that is put out there is that can NRIs uh, have any joint account holder for NRE accounts? Yes, they can have joint account holders, but only NRIs can be the joint account holders for NRIs in case of NRE accounts. Uh, you cannot open a joint account with a resident Indian uh, in case of NRE. Uh, we will discuss, uh, discuss about the nomination and joint applicants in terms of NRO in our next video which is coming up. It is an in detail analysis of the NRO account. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, meanwhile for NRE uh, you can only opt for a joint account holder with another NRI and that too only for the NRE account. Now coming to the final topic for the video. So how is NRE different, uh, different from the other two kinds of the NRI accounts? So we will be discussing it using the factors that we always consider. If you have not been following the series, uh, I request you to do that. We are providing you with the links in the description. Just uh, be in sync. Once you follow the series, you will know the uh, motion that we are following, how we are trying to take every topic once and for all and trying to explain it in detail. So I request you all once again to just keep following the video series so that you can connect to it some more. Coming back to the video, uh, we'll be starting with the purpose. That is the first factor we will consider and that is the first factor we have always been considering. So keeping NRE in our, uh, uh, NRE as a concern, uh, NRE accounts are uh, basically opened for the maintenance of income that is earned outside India. When we compare it to the other two accounts, we come to a conclusion that NRO accounts are used for the purpose of maintaining the income that is earned or generated in India. Whereas FCNR accounts, are used for foreign currency investments in India. So that is the difference between uh, these accounts considering their purposes. Now coming to the next factor which is the currency. So both NRE as well as NRO account are maintained in INR. So you can withdraw funds in INR. That is how the account is maintained. But since FCNR like we had discussed, it is a foreign currency investment tool in India. So the investments and the maintenance of the account are in foreign currencies and the currency can be any one of your choices. It can be uh, in terms of US dollar, pounds, euro, whatever you like. May all the major globally tradable currencies are accepted. Uh, coming to the next uh, factor which is the tenure of deposits. So the tenure of deposits vary with each type of account. For NRE account there is a minimum one year uh, to a maximum of 10 years uh, tenure. Uh, there is a minimum of 7 days to a maximum of 10 years for NRO account and for FCNR you can uh, opt for a tenure, tenure ranging from 1 year to 5 years. 
so the tenures basically differ with each type of account and so does the interest that you earn on these accounts so in case of nre uh, you can earn up to a 6.80 percent interest rate uh, which is once again i would like to mention that it uh, is entirely dependent on the banks that you have chosen for the deposits so it will vary with the bank we are providing you with a tentative or an average rate uh, you can uh, we will help you through the uh, accessing of each uh, interest rate for each bank we will be coming up with more videos to uh, help you with the deposits as well as of now the basic differences between these accounts lies with the interest rates you can get up to 7.30 percent for an nro account you can and up to a 4.05 for fcnr account now coming to the next factor to consider which is repatriation like uh, I had already mentioned in this video as well as my previous videos, the repatriation process is basically the transfer of money from these accounts to your uh, external or foreign, foreign bank accounts. That is the entire process. Now in case of NRE and FCNR, uh, both the principal and the interest that you have earned is completely repatriable. You can transfer the entire money and uh, you don't need to pay any taxes on these repatriations. Uh, which is our next point we'll be considering i think it will be better if we discuss the last two points together it will give you a broader and a wider image so for nre and fcnr you can repatriate the entire money without paying any taxes to the government but if we consider nro which is different from these accounts in that aspect and why is it different uh, because uh, since nro account is used for the income that is generated in india so you are liable to pay taxes to the government and also there is a limit uh, only up to a maximum of 1 million us dollar per financial year can be repatriated now since you are liable to pay taxes the taxes are deducted on this format 30 percent tax along with surcharge and education such is deducted at the source now you might be wondering uh, if 30% tax is deducted and uh, you might be falling in the 10 or 15% income tax lab rate. So why do you need to pay 30% tax? Uh, that's a very legitimate doubt and uh, you don't need to worry. 30% uh, tax might be deducted but uh, by the end of the financial year when you opt for the income tax return filings, you can opt for a refund of the uh, like difference in the slab. So I will explain it with an example like I always do. Uh, you can, uh, for example, 30% tax has been deducted and you fall in the 10% income tax lab. So you are liable to get a 20% refund under your filings. So while you are uh, filing your income tax at the end of the year, you can just opt for that refund. It is as simple as that. So you don't need to worry about the taxation. And that is all for the video as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this was the fourth video. The next video will be on NRO account. Uh, make sure you are following the entire series. That way you will uh, relate to it. You will understand how we are uh, moving forward and how we are creating this entire series so that you benefit from it. The entire series is for you. And in the meanwhile, don't forget to like. Uh, just share the video everywhere. Share it with your friends. Just uh, make conversations about it. It will be too much beneficial, I am telling you. And just subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, we will come up with more videos as soon as we can so that you are uh, happy with it and your entire banking experience is seamless. And uh, you can check our website sbnri.com. We will be coming up with our app pretty soon and we will let you know about everything. We will be sharing everything with you. Till then, just, uh, just keep in the stay in touch, follow the videos. See you soon. Bye.